Father, I want those you have given me to be with me where I am. And to see my glory, the glory you have given me because you loved me before the creation of the world. Righteous Father, though the world does not know you, I know you, and they know that you have sent me. I have made you known to them and will continue to make you known in order that the love you have for me may be in them and that I may, myself may be in them also. Pastor Jay. Thank you, Brother Chuck and Christy and all of those that participated in the service today. A special privilege to hear Beverly play the organ again. Wow. <laughs> yeah, it's good to see my friends, the Muncies. God bless you guys. Love you. Miss you terribly. There's nowhere to mountain bike over there. So, yeah. Um, um, let us... Uh, bow our heads and, and pray before we get begin today. Heavenly Father, Lord, uh, it's good to be in your house. It's good to uh, fellowship with your children, to worship uh, with those that love you. And uh, today, Lord, we are counting on your Holy Spirit to speak a word to us, to give us the uh, encouragement and the, the, um, uh, the, the unction of your grace, Lord, to, to just continue to seek you and to strive to know you and to follow you. And, and Lord, we know that these uh, last days are upon us and that uh, things are rapidly uh, deteriorating as far as this world is concerned. And we choose this morning to put our faith and our trust in you. And we thank you that we can do that because you have invited us uh, graciously, Lord, out of your mercy and your love. And we appreciate that so much. We're thankful for it in this season of thanksgiving. Uh, we're thankful most of all for our Savior Jesus. In his name we pray. Amen. All right. Um, there it is. Your new screen, your new projector looks great. <laughs> um, how many of you guys ate a little too much yesterday or the day before and the day before and the day before? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we, uh, we, we went out to, left Honolulu, went straight to Texas and... Uh, went to uh, my mom's house there, and and her love language is cooking, and food, and so she loved us with uh, with biscuits and gravy and all kinds of that good stuff that you're not supposed to eat, you know, to in order to to uh, be lose weight and be healthy. So all of that is, is out, and um, we're just enjoying the enjoying the time with family, and uh, it's good to see each one of you and to be here at Thunderbird uh, once again. Greetings from the Iaea Church in Honolulu, in, in Iaea, Oahu. Uh, I would say aloha, and they would say aloha. So <laughs> uh, that's how they do it out there. So uh, we bring you greetings from them. And um, uh, it's, it's a time of year to talk about gratitude, isn't it? Yeah, it's a time of year to talk about what we are thankful for. And so uh, uh, I thought, well, it makes perfect sense to talk about impeachment, right? And uh, I, my dear wife, when, when she says, I need, your, I need your sermon title, Lisa wants your sermon title in your text, and I said, okay, the sermon title is impeachment. And she looked at me, and she said, you're not going to talk about that, are you? And I said, yes, I am. I'm, I am going to talk about it, because um, I'm the pastor, and... And I can, I can talk. On Sabbath mornings is the one time I get to say what I want to say. So, just kidding. So uh, I want to talk about that, uh, but I don't. I I know uh, you know there's a there's some some things to uh, maybe you guys saw this. It says uh, uh, if you want to save a ton of money on Christmas gifts, just discuss politics during Thanksgiving dinner. Amen. <laughs> There'll be a lot of, uh, that's a good way to thin down your Facebook uh, friend list and, and all kinds of things. And, and uh, I, I'm not the most intelligent guy, but I do know that talking about politics uh, with family is uh, somewhat of a, a risky thing. And so uh, I'm not going to talk about politics with you either, but I am going to talk about impeachment. 
because I'm, the kind of impeachment that I'm talking about today is not political. I want us to remain friends, amen? <laughs> I want to be able to come back to uh, Thunderbird uh, and, 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 and be friends with you all. And, um, and so uh, today I want to talk about spiritual impeachment. You ever heard of spiritual impeachment? Um, because, see, uh, the kind of impeachment that I'm talking about is comes from the truth that we all know as Seventh-day Adventist Christians that we are living in what we call the great controversy. We are experiencing the great controversy. How many of you uh, believe that in your heart? How many of you have experienced the great controversy in, in and of yourself? All of us are. We're all in it, whether we like it or not. We are not bystanders. We don't get to sit on the on the bleachers and watch everybody else out fighting the battles of the great controversy. Every one of us is right in the middle of it. And there's a war going on for us, for our loyalty, for our hearts. And uh, on the one side, the devil wants to win our, <clears throat> our loyalty and our heart. And on the other side, God is doing everything he can to woo us and to bring us into a saving relationship with himself. And so we're in this spiritual battle. And as it says in... Uh, in uh, Ephesians chapter six, uh, you know it says uh, this this battle. It's not it's not a uh, it's not a battle of flesh and blood. It's a battle between wickedness, powerful wickedness, in, in places that we can't see. But just because we can't see it doesn't mean it's not going on. Amen. So uh, <clears throat> sometimes over the years, words change a little bit. As I talk about impeachment today, meanings of words become obsolete and we don't even use them anymore so uh, but these are some words that I looked up that I thought man we ought to use these because I'm experiencing these words on a, on a daily basis especially after Thanksgiving dinner how many of you had the uh, clinomania the obsessive desire to take a nap you're gonna have to hold off on that brother I see you and I, no not enough in this service uh, how about this one ergophobia the morbid fear of returning to work how many of you have that one yeah, yeah, amen, amen. Uh, and my personal favorite is Snollygoster. It's the shrewd, unprincipled person, uh, especially in reference to a politician, amen? <laughs> oh, I wasn't going to do that, now I'm doing it anyway. Okay, all right. But the word impeachment has not changed much over the years. The word impeachment uh, kind of has, has meant the same thing. It means to call into question the integrity of, or the validity of a person or a practice, to call into question the integrity or the validity of a person or a practice. In the United States, of course, it means to charge the holder of a public office with some type of misconduct. That's what impeachment means. Impeachment is not a new thing. In fact, uh, <clears throat> there has been a concerted, determined, constant effort there has been a long-term attempt at impeachment of the person in charge of the universe for thousands of years now. Because remember, impeachment means to call into question the integrity and the validity of a particular person in a leadership position. And is that not what the enemy has been doing to our God for all these many, many years? He's been trying to impeach God the Father. How about that? There's been a concerted, determined, concert, constant effort at impeachment for thousands of years now. Satan has been bringing his accusations against God and his government since uh, before even our little world was even brought into existence. And he continues to do so to this very moment. Um, what he wants to do is give the worst possible view of the character of God to the world. Now, we have to ask ourselves, has he been successful? Has God been able, has Satan been able to malign the character of God to a certain degree uh, in this world today? And we have to answer, yes, he has been successful in his attempt to impeach God's character, to malign God's character, to impugn God's character. He has been successful because many people in the world today that we live in, many people either hate or fear God. 
Now, those of us that know God and know He is love, God is love, we, He is lo every, be every pore of His being pours out love upon all of us, and, and we sit here this morning because we know that that is an incorrect picture of God. We have no reason to hate God, and we certainly don't have any reason to fear God. But many people hate or fear and or fear God because of the success of the impeachment efforts of our enemy. Many more reject uh, God's existence even. Why? Because the, the, what they have been told, the testimony about God that they have heard or they have been shown by example of, of God people, of church people or whatever it may be, they have this picture of God that is inaccurate and so therefore they, they either hate Him or they fear Him or they choose to say, I just re reject his existence altogether because of the success of the uh, impeachment efforts of the enemy. Uh, because what they have been told or shown about God is so deplorable. May I say that word? <laughs> it's so deplorable what they have been shown or taught or, or demonstrated to about God. It's so, hor it's so awful that if th they say, if that's the kind of God that, that he is, I don't want to have anything to do with him. So they want no part with God and they part ways with God or, or choose not to even acknowledge his existence. So we have all those those three evidences in the world today of people of the success of the impeachment efforts of the enemy against God the Father. Either people hate God or they fear God or they fear and hate God or they just say, I choose to live without acknowledging his existence in any way, shape or form. Now, if we, as we have seen uh, so vividly in the news recently, if you want to impeach someone, there has to be a trial, right? There has to be a trial, at least an inquiry that is, that is going on. And, uh, and uh, witnesses are called and testimony is given and evidence is brought out and, and discussed and evaluated and words and actions of, of certain individuals are are, are weighed and discussed and measured against the standard of the law and, and, of course, our Constitution in order to judge the legality or the illegality, uh, as the case may be, of, of whatever person is under investigation. Now, it's not a perfect system, but it, it makes sense. We don't, you know, we're, how long that the whole process is dragging out has been irritating, very irritating to, to many people. Um, but how long has this how long has this spiritual impeachment attempt been going on? Has it been dragging out a while? You know, our system here in the United States is not a perfect system, but it makes sense to us uh, because we like to believe that nobody is above the law. Everybody is is under the the rule of law and accepts the 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 burden and the limitations of living by the law. The law standards apply equally or should apply equally to everyone, no matter if it's the president in the White House or the common man on the street. Everybody is subject to uh, the rule of law. You know, the amazing spiritual reality uh, that we are told about it in Scripture is that God has allowed this impeachment effort to go on for so long without markedly and dramatically doing something about it. Now, if your character, how many of you enjoy when somebody talks smack about you? <laughs> how many of you like it when you're impugned or maligned? Or how, how many of you enjoy it when someone says things about you that are not true? No, no, none of us do. We, we react violently sometimes to it. And the, the urge to defend ourselves and to, and to, to proclaim our innocence and, and to set the record straight is is a very powerful urge within us and to, to, to allow that to go on as God the Father, to allow someone, to this enemy that we have, to malign him and to, to tell lies about him and to impugn his character and to, and to continually attribute to God the, the, the own evil of his own heart and his own existence and everything he does to say that's God and that's God's fault. God has let that go on for so long and if, if, if I couldn't stand it. I couldn't do it. I can't stand it when people talk bad about me. I got to go fix it. I got to tell them the truth. 
I'm a nice guy. <laughs> but God has let it go on and on and on for all this time. But as SDAs, we, we see the sign. As Seventh-day Adventists, we see the signs that the impeachment trial is coming to a close. Amen? I'm talking about the spiritual one. Satan's charges um, come in three categories. I did a, I did a research uh, 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 on, in uh, my Ellen White app on the word impeach. And she uses the, the word impeach uh, uh, not very frequently, but, but uh, somewhat frequently. And there are three main categories that she lists where Satan uh, is trying to impeach God. She uses the word impeach. Um, where would you, what would you suppose those categories are? I won't, I won't share them all with you because there's many. But, but they come in three basic main categories. The first category in which Satan is trying to impeach. Remember what the word impeach means? It means to call into question the integrity and the, or the validity of a certain person, especially a person in leadership. So she says uh, that the first, the first uh, category that, of impeachment statements that she makes are about God's character. He wants to impeach God's character to call into question the validity or the integrity of God's, of God's character. Can you see that, Seventh-day Adventists? Does Satan do that with, with our God? He wants to call into question his wisdom and his justice. Is God loving and fair or truthful, or is he cruel and arbitrary and, and deceitful? The second... Uh, category or area in which uh, Ellen White uses the word impeachment in reference to God is his law. She wants to impeach God's law. Is God's law just? Is it, is it valid? Is it still binding upon, uh, on Christians? Can it be kept? Is it reasonable? Or is God's law unreasonable? Is there, is there not a, a, a good enough reason to make God's law the foundation of his, of his throne, of his government? It, can we call into question the validity, the integrity of God's law? And the third category is one that you all should be interested in because it has to do with God's people. God's people. She, he attempts to impeach God's people to call into question the validity, our standing with God himself. So what are the three areas that he's trying to impeach? God's character, God's law, and God's people. God's people, what right do sinners have to salvation? Do they serve God from love or from fear? Are they really changed people? Can they be trusted to, to be given eternal life? Are they safe to save, as some would say? Are they safe to bring into God's perfect kingdom? How does God answer these charges of impeachment against him? How does God answer these things? Well, I, there are so many Bible texts uh, that that um, uh, that have to do with uh, with these things. Um, there's my there's my Ephesians check text that was uh, too far back. But I want to just go over some of these texts. Uh, how does God answer the charges against Him? Number one is His Word. God answers the charges of impeachment by His Word. Look at what God says about Himself, and He passed in front of Moses. Proclaiming the Lord, the Lord, compassionate and gracious God, slow to anger, abounding in love and faithfulness, maintaining love to thousands and forgiving wickedness, rebellion and sin. Is that true about God? Is that who he is? Yet he does not leave the guilty unpunished. He punishes the children and their children for the sin of the parents to the third and fourth generation. So there are limits to God's mercy and his, and his love as well. It's balanced by justice. So God's word is one of the ways that he uh, defends the charges against him. I looked at, there's another uh, text that, uh, in Isaiah chapter 43, verses 25 and 26. God says about himself, I, even I, am he who blots out your transgressions for my own sake and remembers your sins no more. And then uh, he, God even uses some impeachment or, or courtroom language. When he talks about his, his own character, he says, Review the past for me. Let us argue the matter together. Let, state the case for your innocence, God says. 
I'm the one who forgives. I'm the one who blots out your transgressions. In a court of law, you're guilty, but I have blotted out your transgressions. So the first way that God answers the impeachment charges against him are by his word. The second way that God answers the impeachment charges are his works. The things that God does. Let them give thanks to the Lord. Psalm 107, verses 8 and 9. Let them give thanks to the Lord for His unfailing love and His wonderful deeds or works to the children of men. For He satisfies the thirsty and fills the hungry with good things. We see God in His works justifying Himself by the way that He cares for, for His people and He provides for His people. We see that through the history of God's people down through the ages, through the centuries. and Their, their faithfulness to Him is rewarded but when they wander away from him and, and, and refuse his protection, what happens to them as well? So we see God's faithfulness and God's defense of, against the impeachment charges in his word and also in his works. But the best, and uh, I have another text here, one of my, one of my uh, uh, favorite texts out of Romans. It says, for the, from, the big, from the creation of the world, for since the creation of the world, God's invisible qualities, his eternal power, his divine nature, have been clearly seen by what he does, by what he's done. It's clearly, it's clearly visible, God's character, by what he has made and by what he does with what he has made. It's clearly seen, Paul says. Being understood from what has been made so that people are without excuse. According to Paul, there is no excuse not to believe in God. There's no excuse to fear him. There's no excuse to hate him. There's no excuse to just deny his existence whatsoever. Paul says, for although they knew God, they neither glorified him as God nor gave thanks to him, but their thinking became futile and their foolish hearts were darkened, professing themselves to be wise, they became fools. That's what happens when impeachment efforts are successful in the human heart, the impeachment efforts of God. So God answers the impeachment charges by his word. He answers by his works. But most of all, he has answered us in his, with his son. Words and deeds sometimes are, are not enough, are they? You have to give a demonstration. And God says in his word, the word became flesh and made his dwelling among us. Sometimes just talking is not good enough. Just statements are not good enough. It has to be demonstrated. It has to be shown. Because once you see it with your eyes and taste it with your own taste buds and touch it with your hands, and once you have experienced for yourself that God is good, that changes everything. It changes everything. And the Word became flesh and made His dwelling among us. We have seen His glory, the glory of the one and only Son who came from the Father, full of grace and full of truth. God said, my words are not enough. What I've done is not enough. If you need a full, complete demonstration of my innocence against these charges that have been leveled against me for all these thousands of years, all you need to do is take a close look at my son, Jesus. And Jesus came and testified against the impeachment proceedings. His life was a testament that the charges that Satan had ginned up against our Father were false and to be rejected. Because Jesus said, Philip, if you've seen me, you've seen the Father. And when Jesus finished his testimony, as uh, we read in, the, in our, our text this morning, Jesus said these words, Righteous Father, though the world does not know you, I know you, and they know that you have sent me. I have made you known to them and will continue to make you known in order that the love that you have for me may be in them and that I myself may be in them. Do you see how God designed his impeachment defense? He designed it in the gift of his son who loved us so much that he was willing to lay down his life so that we can have eternal life. 
And because of Jesus, because of what he's done forever, the issue of Satan's impeachment efforts have been answered. The questions about God's character, the questions about God's law, and the questions about God's people answered by God's Son. You know, there's a word picture, there's a word picture in, uh, in Scripture about this process that's going on. It's a courtroom scene. You may have read it. It's in Daniel chapter 7, verses 9 and 10. It says, I looked and the thrones were set in place and the Ancient of Days took his seat. His clothing was as white as snow. The hair on his head was white like wool. His throne was flaming with fire. Its wheels were all ablaze. A river of fire was flowing, coming out from before him. Thousands upon thousands attended him. 10,000 times 10,000 stood before him. The court was seated and the books were open. Brothers and sisters, some people think that those books are about us. But they're not. They're about him. They're about his interaction with human beings. They're about the defense of God, his plan, his fairness, his judgment and his law, and what he has chosen to do with the human race to bring them back into oneness with himself. Now, that's the amazing thing, that instead of lashing out, instead of firing everybody that had anything to do with a rebellion against him, God sent his son. He sent his son. And he's willing to sit down with us and say, come now, let us reason together. Though your sins be as scarlet, they shall be white as snow. This word picture in Scripture describes the final hearing when all the efforts of Satan to impeach the character of God are defeated because they will be. That's the good news. In fact, the Bible says in Daniel 7, verse 20 and 20, 21, 22, as I watched this horn, of course, the little horn is the represent, represented, the human representative of the attacks of God that have been going on for all these years. He was waging war against the holy people and defeating them until the Ancient of Days came and pronounced judgment. And read this together with me, will you? Pronounced judgment in favor of the holy people of the Most High. And the time came when they possessed the kingdom. Is that time very near? <laughs> I believe it is. God's people are justified in the impeachment hearing. That sounds incredible, doesn't it? Because we don't deserve it. <laughs> we don't deserve to be justified. We don't be deserve to be cleared. Whenever Satan makes ac accusations against us, he doesn't tell lies. Most of the time, it's the truth. It's the truth. What about us today? Is, is Satan attacking you? Has, have you felt the, the consequences of the impeachment efforts of the enemy in your life? I know I have. Satan tries to impeach me all the time. He tries to impeach my joy. He tries to impeach my love. He tries to impeach my family. He tries to impeach my hope. Remember what impeachment is? It's to cast dispersion on, on, some, on, on, on the validity or the integrity of something or someone. So Satan says, you have no reason to be hopeful. Look at you. Look at who you are. you got no reason to be hopeful. You have no reason to be joyful. You have no reason to stand up in front of people and proclaim the name of Jesus when you are who you are and you act the way you do. He tries to impeach me all the time. How about you guys? That's what he does. He's the impeacher, except the Bible calls it an accuser, the accuser of the brethren. The Bible says in Revelation 12, verse 11, they triumphed over him by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony, and they did not love their lives so much as unto death. How many of you have triumphed over the impeacher by the word of your testimony and the blood of the Lamb? Every one of us, that is our opportunity, that's our opportunity testimony you know in closing there's a beautiful story about a lady named mary that brought a gift of gratitude to jesus and it's the thanksgiving season she brought this gift of gratitude and she was castigated for it when she brought in this expensive perfume and she poured it on jesus feet and she wiped his feet with her hair and uh, cried tears of, of thankfulness and joy and she was castigated for it she was impeached for it the disciples tried to impeach her why wasn't this perfume sold and give it to the poor look at how expensive what a waste 
to pour this expensive perfume on, on someone's feet. They attempted to impeach her, but she had a defender in the room. She had someone on her side that took up her cause, that testified in her behalf with his own blood. I just want to show you a couple of paragraphs out of the Desire of Ages that talk about that, talk about the, the aftermath of that, of, that, of that little incident in the life of Christ. It says, Christ might commission the angels of heaven to pour out the vials of his wrath on our world to destroy those who are filled with hatred of God. He might wipe this dark spot from his universe, but he does not do this. Amen? He could have just, you know, when, when Mary was kneeling at his feet, he could have destroyed her. A few words of truth of the way that her life had been, and she would have been crushed. He could have proved that all of their, their whisperings and their finger pointings were absolutely correct. He could have, but he didn't. He could have done that, brothers and sisters, with this whole world. In fact, some would argue that he should have, but he didn't. It says he does not do this. He is today standing at the altar of incense, presenting before God the prayers of those who desire his help. Do you desire his help today? I know I do. Listen to this. The souls that turn to him for refuge, Jesus lifts above the accusing and the strife of tongues, those pointing impeachment fingers. Jesus lifts the soul above that. No man or evil angel can impeach these souls. Amen? Amen. Christ unites them to his own divine human nature. And when you are united with Christ, you are unimpeachable. Somebody believes it out there. I'm thankful. Thankful, sister. God bless you. They stand be beside the great sin bearer in the light proceeding from the throne of God. Who shall lay anything to the charge of God's elect? The charge is the impeachment charges that Satan is attempting to lay at your feet because you do not deserve heaven. You don't. You never will. He will. He does. And he gives it to you and to me. Who shall lay anything to the charge of God's elect? It is God that justifieth. Who is he that condemneth? Who is this impeacher? Who is this, this mouth that's, that's saying all these things, Paul says? It is God that justifies. Who is he that condemneth? It is Christ that died, yea, rather, that is risen again, who is even at the right hand of God, who also maketh intercession for us. Is that good news to you? It should be the best news. The best news that we have to be grateful about is that Satan's attempts to impeach God's character, God's law, and God's people are defeated on the cross of Christ. Are you thankful for that today? Are you, are, are you, can you even talk about this kind of impeachment without getting mad at your brothers and sisters? This is the best kind. This is the best way when Jesus on the cross defends, is our defense, our Savior and our Lord. Why don't you turn to one another and uh, say, I'm thankful for you and I'm thankful for Jesus today. Can you do that? <laughs> Amen.